Hey y'all, Quabila Jones here, host of the Q-Spot Podcast. Make sure to be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And please subscribe, like, follow, share, and hit the notification bell. With special guest Ashley Wilson discussing the strong black woman when she breaks. Hey y'all, this is Quilila Jones, host of the Q-Spot Podcast. Welcome to another video series edition with my very special guest, Mrs. Ashley Wilson, who is a licensed professional counselor. Um, Mrs. Wilson is a Chicago native, but uh, we have claimed her down here in the South now. Uh, she is married to a wonderful man named Eric, has two wonderful boys. Um, she is an alumnus of Arkansas State University, and she is a member of the Kappa Nu Omega alumni chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Alrighty, so how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing really well, really well. And one more thing we have to know, she is a black business owner, y'all. Lord. I am. Thank I want you. a piece, even though this is not her piece, this is one from her company. So got a little head to represent today. <laughs> it's a top of our team. I call y'all pushers, but you know it's a good, it's a good kind of push though. <laughs> so how are you today? <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm so glad to be here. I appreciate you. I've known you for a long time. Um, you watched me grow up, and now mm-hmm. we're both women. And it's good to see you blossoming in your element. I just love it. I, I really do. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. And I am just overjoyed at you know professional woman you become. I'm always seeing that in you, and so I feel like you were the right person to discuss oh. this topic. So, <laughs> Thank you. The topic today is the strong black woman when she breaks. We've heard this narrative, you know, and people are so quick to throw it out. Oh, you're so strong as a compliment, but that's not really a compliment at times. <laughs> we get tired, not tired. All right. we get tired. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so let's just talk, you know, start at the beginning. Where did this narrative of the strong black woman come from? Well, um, I would say that it probably started with just our our ancestors, <laughs> just mm-hmm. the roles that our ancestors had to play and, and our development. And it just kind of passed on down from there where the expectation is this the woman is man in a home. She's got to uphold her man. She's got to make sure the kids are well taken care of. She's got to endure so much. Um, and when she endures all this, this is her strength. Like she's going through this, she's going through that. And this was what makes her strong. And I think that it just kind of trickled down from there. And then you add in family expectations, society expectations, the relationship expectations. I mean, it's a lot. And, and it's so many criteria that people put on women um, and women have to uh, all the time meet these standards. And like mm-hmm. you said, we're tired, <laughs> like we're, we're human beings, but um, people want to call us superwoman and they want to label, oh, you juggling all these things, you're a superwoman. Um, and it's like, listen, I don't have superwoman powers. <laughs> I'm just making it. <laughs> so I, I just think that it just started a long time ago and it just trickled on um, down and it just continues. And at some point, um, I think we need to start changing the narrative on that and start just being honest about uh, what our strength comes from and and not always um, encompass it with a struggle. That's right. Um, and sometimes being strong is the only choice we have in whatever capacity that looks like. But we'll get a little more into that. Um, I'm glad you mentioned about our ancestors. So I want to ask this question. Do you feel that generational trauma can be inter um, and I'm not no no that's a word can be intermingled correlated with that strong black woman narrative um, because of what our ancestors had to do endure during slavery and I know our history doesn't start with slavery but it's the most recent history that we really have access to. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. It is. It's it's a lot of different things. It's, as kids, when we grow up, our parents always say, you know, be quiet. You know? <laughs> Don't talk when grown people are talking. It's always shutting us up in some form. And then when you become an adult, it's like, you know, we got to pick and choose what we can say. And sometimes we go to the extremes with that <laughs> because we've been restricted for so long. But 
our ancestors were told to be quiet, we're treated like children and and not having a voice and women, you know, take it, you know, just take what you're giving, you know, what what's happening to you, take it, have children of your masters. You can't say anything about it. If you speak out, there's going to be some form of abuse. You could be in an abusive relationship back then. And if you speak out, hey, that just makes it worse. Everything that happens in this home stays in this home. And it's just those generational things that kind of trickle down a lot of um sexual abuse, a lot of physical abuse, emotional abuse that happened to a lot of women um, in early childhood and, and even in, in, in adult life, it's always be quiet. You know, you, you can't share that. And, you know, if you share that, it's the level of vulnerability. Sorry. Yeah, no, I'm just I don't know what you were telling me to pause. Or no, 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 that was, that right. was your church. Yes, I guess. <laughs> you get that whole, don't tell, it's taboo. Oh, you yeah. Know. You're gonna shine a negative light on our family, our household. We can't let people know what's really going on up and all that stuff. Like absolutely. We gotta get rid of that. And then we wonder why yeah, there's, uh, there's so many grown up children. Um mm -hmm. people walking around like they're adults, but right. on the inside they're still children. Absolutely. I learned this in um in counseling in my in my studies that when you go through a trauma as a young kid, like you're stuck there emotionally, like you're there. Like that's that's your emotional maturity. And when you become an adult, you don't know how to handle certain things because you are still emotionally a child. And so as a therapist, like we have to a lot of times go all the way back to childhood. We can't start with where you are now because where you are now, you're not emotionally mature to handle the things that you need to handle as an adult. So we got to take you back to childhood and kind of deal with those things. So when, you know, that's what I love about the Bible and, you know, and the scripture and just the love of the Lord, because it's like, we have to love each other unconditionally. And we don't always do that. I'm not perfect in that either, because you don't know what a person's going through. You don't know what they've been through and you don't necessarily understand where they are as a person now. And they may be, you know, ready to overcome it, but we're so judgmental and we're so hard on adults and, and we're hard on women that people, you just kind of shell up and you keep that stuff in and you just continue to walk around wounded. Um, and so I just, I, I think that like when I was talking about changing that narrative about strength is you're strong just because you're, you're moving. You're like, you're going, you're, you're pressing regardless of what you've been through. Like that's a level of strength, but it's also a level of strength when you have overcome something and you have gotten to a, you know, a good place mentally and emotionally. Those two things a lot of times don't get um, the same level of, of praise that they deserve. And mm -hmm. I think if we can just change that narrative and praise people, whether they have gone through something tr tremendous or traumatic, or they just really didn't go anything traumatic. They just kind of, you know, arrived because they just kept going. I think that both of those need to be in the same category. And um, I just, as people, we have to help each other for sure. Yes, ma'am. Because, you know, and I'm sure you've seen this in your profession. What happens when you don't unpack and you don't deal and stuff keeps piling? Um, it reaches <laughs> a breaking point. Like oh, everything yeah. has a breaking point. Um, we know what happens when a dam overflows. It okay. can't hold the water back anymore. Okay. It bursts. Absolutely. We know we're seeing now during, in the midst of the snowstorm when the pipes have expanded, they burst. And, you know, now it's a whole mess. So imagine right. a human being who's only capable of holding in so much. Exactly. And then those emotions, all that stuff just start. Right. <laughs> I mean, and we'll get back with some other questions, but have okay. you seen anyone specifically a woman like really break just have a oh total. yes no oh doubt. yes multiple times multiple situations and and um and a lot of times it has been from childhood hurt like trauma that they have experienced and um that trauma they never learned how to deal with it um their mom didn't know what to do with them in that situation they didn't know how to deal with things themselves and so they didn't learn how to manage their emotions they didn't learn how to manage trauma and um uh, as adults and and, and the littlest of things can take them back to a place of that trauma or take them to a place of this i can't i'm giving up I'm over it. Like this is too much. I didn't had it. I, I'm I'm over it. I'm done. And they're ready to check out. Mm 
Um, and so I've seen it I, and, and it hurts me. You know, I have to, you know, be as empathetic as I as I possibly can in those situations. But it also hurts me just because I'm a human being and to watch that unfold. And, you know, you feel for that person and you feel that pain, you feel that emotion and you want to help, you know, and you have to help that person. You know, you have I got to take, you know, myself out of it and help them arrive to that place so that when I'm not there, of course, they can do this without me. But it, it's hard um, to watch that, you know, those breakdowns and those um, I'm just giving up on life. Um, but that's I'm glad to be in this position because I can help them and they just need tools, tools in their toolbox that they didn't have growing up that they can now have as adults that will help them. They can go in that tool toolbox. Oh, I'm, I'm angry. And, you know, what I'm saying I want to punch walls. OK, go in that toolbox. Let's talk about these coping strategies. Okay. I'm so depressed. I don't want to eat today. I'm not taking a bath. I'm not taking care of my kids. Like, I'm just sad. I can't handle nothing. Let's go in this toolbox. Let's get them coping skills out. Let's let's go over these things that, you know, you can utilize to kind of help you rebuild that dam that okay. broke so that these emotions have a healthy place to go. Like, we, we don't want the emotions to just kind of be balled up to where it's pressure, pressure, pressure on the wall. We want to flow and, and just be a part of nature, you know, like the dams, they, they, they play their part. So we want this, we want your emotions to play their part. They're good, they're healthy, but we don't want them out of whack. They breaking down dams, breaking bridges and everything else. Okay. <laughs> so we need this toolbox and I'll get you this toolbox. But yeah, I've seen it and it's hard. It's definitely hard to watch. Wow. Now, you mentioned how uh, sometimes the parent or caregiver of a person doesn't know how to help them. So let's talk about generational curses and generational trauma and things of that nature. Is it possible to break the cycle? Um, sometimes our parents or caregivers can only love and help and nurture us from the point of what they have. They can't give us anything more or less. So can yes. the cycle be broken so that our next generation's do not suffer those same consequences that we have suffered. Yes, definitely. And it starts with you. Um, you're the only person that can start to break that cycle. Um, mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's easier said than done um, because sometimes the environments that we're in mm -hmm. keeps us in those um, um, mm -hmm. those experiences or keeps us in a place of this is what I know. And I can just speak to my own self. I disclose sometimes with my clients when it's necessary. And so when I was growing up, my father, um, he's passed on great man. He was an alcoholic. And um, I watched my mother, you know, and I didn't know what it meant until I became a wife and a mother myself. I watched my mother like take care of him and, and never really say anything when he was having his negative outburst and mm -hmm. saying things that he shouldn't have been saying to us. I, it angered me as an adult. And I was like, I'm not putting up with that. And no man going to talk to me like this and, and this and that or whatever. And I just had to learn that it wasn't that my mother was weak because that's what I saw. I saw weakness. I, I learned later that it was protection, that it was not, it wasn't going to help the situation. It's going to make it worse. Um, mm -hmm. And I had to learn as a adult, but as a kid. And so my role, we have these roles as in, in our family. I'm the middle child. So my role is the negotiator. I'm the guidance counselor. I'm the go-to person. That's my role. And so that's the role I played my whole entire childhood. And I wouldn't tell on anybody. I would go and talk to my siblings and say, look, this stupid. <laughs> you gonna get in trouble. Don't do it. Running away with my sister, trying to make her come back home. I get in trouble with it. Like just stuff like that. Like that was my role. And so I was the person who always, when daddy was having it, let's calm daddy down. That's my role. I go calm daddy down. When I was 19 years old, I'll never forget this. The last day that my dad ever took a drink, I was dating my husband at the time, and my dad was having a fit, and he had went and got his gun out of the shed where we was living, and he came in. He was like, I just, I want to be done with it. Like, I'll just take everybody and myself out. I just, I, I'm, I'm over it. I'm, I'm just frustrated. I never knew where his anger came from, and he's mm -hmm. passed on, so I, I never learned that. Um, I know he has some childhood issues and trauma, and, and so I was tired. I said no more. Like, I'm tired of this role because it wasn't helping me. It was actually making me more of a people pleaser and more of an unhealthy person emotionally because I was trying to help other people feel better and I was neglecting myself. And I mm -hmm. said, I'm tired. I don't want to play this role anymore. I called my husband at boyfriend, excuse me, my boyfriend at the time. Let me get the skip. <laughs> I said, look, I'm tired. I don't want to do this anymore. He got on the phone. He called his dad. 
So dad came down, amazing father in law of mine, and they talked and they prayed, and that was it. And that was the last time that I had to do that. And I made up my mind that I wasn't going to do it anymore. I was tired. So yeah. you got to get to a place where you're tired and you got to recognize that you are in, you know, this is something that your mom did, or this is something that's trickling down that your grandma did, your auntie, your dad, or whoever, because I, I took on a lot of my dad's characteristics. A lot of me came from my father more so than my mom. And so I had to get to those places where I had to break things. I had to walk away from relationships where I saw people who may be going down a path of addiction or people who may, I, I would get in relationships where I had to be a caregiver. And I'm like, no, I, I have to break all of that. I don't want to be that person that's unhealthy. I had to man myself. And that's how I was able to break out. And so that's what I encourage in sessions. Like, are you tired? Like, do you want better? And if you want better, let's start taking the first step. And the first step is saying no. Okay. You know, I may say some other words, but, you know, <laughs> we don't lie. <laughs> Yeah. One of them dies, somebody yeah. might get a little. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, okay. Another piece to that. Um, what I didn't hear, and I'm sure you bring this up in your sessions. Um, this is the next question. Having an adequate support system, yeah. how vital is that when you're going through and you finally acknowledged and recognize, I can't do this. I'm tired. Something's happening. Something's wrong. Reaching it. No, you did reach out to your then boyfriend, now husband. So that was one, you know, support. And then his father. And then so I'm sure others came along along the way. And of course, you're your sisters, which I know all of them. Um, <laughs> eventually, I'm sure it became a family affair. Like, OK, something has to give right here, right now, or this family's not going to continue. And right. so talk about why. We need a support system. We are not an island. We cannot go through things alone. Right. Right. I mean, you definitely need a support system because you can only go so far with, you know, um, um, your man and yourself. And, and we always, I can do bad all by myself. That's only going to last for so long. Like, you know, like we say that and, and hey, it has some true elements to it. But loneliness is, is just a form of isolation and you self-isolate. You don't make connections with people. You don't build genuine relationships. And it's loneliness and it's unhappiness. And you know, people, if they're true to themselves, they really don't want that. Um, and if, even if it's just one person in, in their life that they would like to just connect with, they just sometimes don't know how or don't know where to start. But um, having a support system, system is so strong and it just gives you accountability because if you are trying to make change, that support system can help you stay on that road and that path. Say, hey, look, you know, we're here for you. We support you. What do you need? Like, where are we going? Like, let's get this going. Let's get you to a healthy place. And you have people that you can talk to and you can depend on and you can share with and you can vent to um, and just start a really good healing process uh, mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's not something that you want to go at alone. Okay. Our ancestors didn't do it alone. I mean, you know, we 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 have been come divisive over time, um, and I know we were divisive at times when we were going through slavery. But there were times when we had to band together and we had to all work together and to to make things happen, um, so everybody can survive and everybody can be okay. Um, and so we we have to use that same mentality. We need each other to survive. We need each other to be okay. And um, having a strong support system encompasses all of that. Yes, ma'am. So I want to get into the breaking point. So we've right. you know, talked about okay, all these emotions have built up. We have become who we are. And we're we've taken on this mantle of strength because it's all the only choice we have. But then here comes the break. Here comes the moment of everything's about to spill over, spill out. It's got to come out somewhere. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was inspired to do this discussion. And I know Tamar Braxton is the only woman ever in the world who's ever had a meltdown. But that seeing that publicly did something for me. And she had all these people around her and all this family. And it's like no one saw something like nobody intervened before she just completely cracked. And again, she's not the only one, but that's that stuck out to me. So it's like, okay, how do we recognize, or is there a way to recognize when we're about to have a breaking point and how do we recognize it in other women, other people in our circle when they're about to crack? 
Yeah. <laughs> so I, I guess this kind of backs up just a little bit, if I can back up just a little bit mm -hmm. on this and, and kind of build up to that. So when we play roles, you know, in our family, we play roles in our relationships with people and we have a certain personality. Um, a lot of times people may think, oh, that's just Ashley, you know, they probably, that's just, Tamar, you know, uh, she wants some attention or so on and so forth. Um, or um, because of our role and because we we don't talk about stuff in families, we never learn how to communicate. We never learn how to work through things. People aren't going to touch that. Like, mm -hmm. I may see that you're going through something. I don't know how to help you. And, I, you know, this is not something like you, you got to get through your own stuff because I don't even know what to do to help you get through it. Mm -hmm. So we never did that. We never sat down as family. OK, y'all, dad has he's an alcoholic. So this is what we need to do in the meantime. We can have that talk. So what do we do about this? So it could be possible that several things could have went on. One, we don't know what to do to help her. Two, I got my own stuff to worry about. Three, you know, that's just them. You know, that's the that's that's the person that they are, and you know, it is what it is. And so, who knows? You know, we're not on TV, um, and a lot of times I've watched some 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 behind the scene things with some shows, and one show that I think is so interesting is called Unreal. And um, I don't know if anybody else has seen this show. And basically they show the producers, like how the producers do reality shows and producers encourage fights, you know, because they mm -hmm. want to be able to, to have the spotlight for their show. Um, they encourage fighting. They encourage you to sleep with somebody. They encourage you to do this. They'll have the camera shoot a, a private conversation and make it seem like it was this and that. And so it could have been encouraged because when money and, and fame and different things kind of come in to play, they, that stuff can break, you know, relationships. And, 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 and they probably did see something, but they wasn't able to say it based on contracts or whatever the producers or whoever trying to do. Um, but you have to be able to, you know, me and my siblings, we're different. You know, we didn't have those talks, but we are all warriors for each other. So if national TV, we could all show out. <laughs> like, forget everything. Sue us. Listen, my sister going through some stuff. I'm like, oh, the, you air this. I'm tearing the camera up. Like, we can tear the whole setup. Okay, oh, <laughs> us, we coming through. So everybody gonna know. We all mm -hmm. you gonna know about all all five of us. Then tow up this whole this whole hunter hunter's family set over our family. <laughs> So, that's, you know, they have been doing this for a long time, you know, um, and and a lot of times, you know, you think that somebody's OK and they're not OK. And you think, oh, they're strong. Like you be the strong sibling. Oh, they, they're going to make it. Um, or they're just, like I said, looking for attention. So we have to check ourselves. We got to check our own biases. You know, some we learn um, in counseling and how we how we perceive situations, how we perceive people, because our neglect of others can you know, in, in, in a sense, turn into kind of what seems to be happening with Tamar. Um, and, you know, nobody really saw it. And, and, it, and it's, a, it's a hard situation. I see that it touched you um, yeah. pretty intensely because I'm, it's, maybe you've been through a situation where you felt like people weren't paying attention. They couldn't see or and you didn't you know, you may have had some strong moments, but we ain't, we ain't doing counseling right now. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I'd be just observing. No. But um, I, I just think that when people you have to recognize and that goes back to breaking those generational curses you have to recognize and i'm glad you know however she felt like she needs to get help she did what she had to do and you can't be worried about nothing else you have to you have to put yourself out there in a way that's going to get somebody's attention i can't do this no more like i'm done like i'm i'm I, you have to recognize within yourself or you're going to have a breakdown like like, you know, she did. And if you have that breakdown, that's OK. It is what it is. It's not the end of the world. It could be in the cloud forever. And people want to play it a thousand times. But you got to be securing yourself. I'm not there anymore. I'm working on me. I'm good. So, yeah. So it, it's little things that can happen, you know, with your family. Like it just depends, you know, if, if a person's withdrawn um, and they're not normally uh, someone who's withdrawn, um, if they start. Um, doing things that are out of the ordinary that you feel a little strange that, you know, ask, ask them, you know, what's going on? What's happening? Are you OK? Um, in your own family way, you know, have y'all talk to each other. Um, if people start giving away things that's very precious to them, you want to start thinking, OK, well, why are you giving away things, you know, <laughs> that you have loved and has been so precious to you for all this time? You just want to start, you know, asking those questions and don't ignore it.
Okay. We so can you, all do our part. You mentioned ignore. Like, you're bringing up, just, I'm going to ignore my questions for a minute, but because you're bringing up so many wonderful points about, um, we do it, one, we ignore people, but on the other hand, and I'm going to give a little self-disclosure, you know, because of the physical condition that I go through, I do shut myself off because I feel like, well, nobody cares, nobody you know, listens or they think I just want attention and I don't, I just want people to understand, you know? Right. And so, yeah, there are times I've cut myself off. And I think that's why that moment struck me because I was at a place in time in my life and I was like, okay, God, I, I need help. You know, I need something. I need somebody just to listen to me and not give me sympathy. That's the last thing most people want. Right. It's sympathy. Absolutely. They just need some empathy. They need someone to sit and listen. I don't need a therapist right now. Like in this particular moment, like I don't need a therapist. I don't need a preacher. I don't, I just need somebody to sit. <laughs> with me. Right. And so, yeah. Um, and so on, we, we have to recognize when someone's going through something, get out of ourselves enough. And then also the other person, me, we need to be able to be vulnerable and say, okay, I'm having a really hard time with this. I need some help. <laughs> right. And that's the toughest part. Like being vulnerable, that's really tough. Um, and it just depends on you as a person and what you've gone through, um, how comfortable you are with, with yourself and and sharing that you need help. You say you were withdrawn. So when you a person that withdraw, you have to just do like a person that withdraws when they are like experiencing something heavy, that person has to do go big or go home. Um, that person has to just go out there and say, hey, here's my announcement. I'm not okay. <laughs> like, like, can't ease into it because if you're a person that just goes to withdrawal, you are never going to say it. You just going to have to just put it out there. I'm not okay. I'm going back into my room. So people would know that you're not okay and they can help you um, because subtle things is not going to get anybody's attention for a person who's usually withdrawn because you're going to do it in such a way that they're not going to even know yeah. <laughs> that you're going through something because you really are trying not to draw attention to yourself because you want to handle this on your own. Uh, so you just have to, you got to put it out there. Hey, I'm not okay on social media. I'm not okay. <laughs> I told y'all no. Somebody call somebody. <laughs> well, look, you were forewarned. If you ever see something because I think you know me a little bit enough to, if you see something that's like, is that Quibilla talk? What is? It? Yeah, then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna be messaging you. See, hey, <laughs> hey, I saw your post. <laughs> my door is down. everything okay? <laughs> window, something. Come, come check on me if you see something. Like, <laughs> yeah. like, just yes. Uh, pass go and just come on and check. On. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh goodness. Okay. So I want to kind of bring it back to black women because we seem to be um, on the low end of the totem pole. I I studied sociology and so I studied social stratification and social classes and intersectionality and things like that. And so black women, when it comes to economics, when it comes to uh, education, when it comes to a lot of different things, black women are down here. As yep. far as the respect we we receive, yes. the recognition we receive, black women are at the very bottom, <laughs> and yes. we've made some accomplishments Lots since the 1700s, 1600s. We're still yes. at the bottom. <laughs> so, what can we as black women start to do individually, collectively, to start? Okay, I'm shaking this narrative, but I'm going to show you what real strength is. I don't know, like. Where do we start? I don't know. Well, I saw something that as soon as you says I saw something probably like probably a month ago. Um, it was just before you reached out to me and I thought, oh my God, like this is this is so crazy that she's reaching out to me about this topic because I watched um Oh, I was scrolling on social media. I don't do it very often, but this particular time I was scrolling and I saw um, where this lady who normally she's a, a social media personality and she was sharing a story about Pastor John Gray and his wife and Jackson. I can't think of his last name. Um, he's a social media personality. He's the guy that's always talking about how you have to treat black yeah, women. Yeah. He's always uplifting them and so on and so forth. And so 
basically in this event, the wife got upset. Pastor John Gray's wife got upset. This is public, so I'm not, you know, sharing anything that's not out there. She got upset with him, with Jackson, because he kind of made some statements about how her husband was treating her. And mm. she got upset and she came for him and so on and so forth. But I went back and I got, you know, more information on that story. And what he said was so powerful. It has stuck with me ever since. He said that basically Pastor John Gray had cheated on his wife multiple times. And in his response to that, when he was on a talk show, he said, you know, my wife has stood by me through all this and she's raised me. And, you know, he was just giving all these accolades and so on and so forth. Well, Jackson's response was, first of all, we got to stop allowing, you know, men to value us by how much they can put us through. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, like what? You know, not that that's what I was, you know, dealing with anything like that, but I thought it was so strong because a lot of people, a lot of women and things that we've experienced and been through, it's like, you my ride or die. You should, you held me down while I was gone for 10 years. You know, my husband, like, I'm holding you down for 10 years. And she was putting money in my books, you know, she fights for me, you know, all this stuff. And it's like, okay, I'm more than that. And and I can't even get to my dreams and who I am because I'm always trying to make sure you get your life together. You're mm -hmm. a grown man. I'm grown too. And so he was like, you know, you your mom raised you. This woman is your wife. She should not be raising you. Mm -hmm. We got to stop defining the strength of a black woman by how much stuff she's overcome with you. So I think if we stop the, like valuing ourselves about how much stuff we can go through, we can get over and so on and so forth, then we'll find we'll be able to break a lot of this. So we, you know, I overcame, I, you know, I was, I was the, this person, now I'm Miss CEO. No, I was always a CEO before I walked in this door. That was my goal. I, I'm already that. I have the capability. I have the attitude. I have the mentality. I have the education. And I'm not coming in here defeated. I'm not coming in here already. I'm the low woman on the totem pole. I'd have been through this and I'd have been through that. No, that doesn't matter. I'm already valued because why? I know I'm valued. Okay. I have the values, and that's what I'm walking in the door with. That's what I'm walking into a relationship with. I'm not tolerating this other nonsense. And so we have to we have to say that with ourselves. You know, I, I had to, like, my high school boyfriend, you you remember my high school boyfriend? <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, he had some personal stuff that he was going through, and I just told him I'm too young. I'm too young to take on this. I don't want this. As hard as it was, it hurt me so bad. It was my first love. But I had to recognize that what I was going to have to go through with him was going to be too much for me. And that I had to say, no, I was not going to define my life by overcoming his issues. And I said, no. And that's been my motto. No, I'm not dealing with that. 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 You don't have to. You don't have to. You have to tell yourself, I don't have to. You can get anybody you want if you believe it. You can have whatever you want if you believe it, but you got to have self value. You can't, you know, being a ride or die is for a husband and wife. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Okay. Class of collective to a certain extent, as well, there, because there's things that you shouldn't put on each other. There are certain expectations. Y'all are adults and, you know, you grow together, you learn together, but you're still individuals and, and it's not on each other to, to carry each other's burdens. You know, we carry those together collectively and we work through those things together. But it's it's not on me to help you through your, you know, if you you got it, you're addicted to something, I'm going to be your support through, you know, sickness and health. But I can't get you over it. You have to get over it. And I don't want you to be like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm better because of you. No, you're better because of you. And we have to learn that we have to learn. We are we are empowering in ourselves and we overcome the things ourselves, you know, with, with God, of course, definitely first and foremost. But we have to we have to stop defining ourselves by the things we've gone through, which is kind of encompasses this whole, you know, strong <laughs> black woman, uh, Mandra anyway, like our value is on who's overcome the most. <laughs> who's, who, who who got to the top of this and top of that based on what she been through. We got to stop that as women and we got to come together and say that don't matter. It don't matter. She got three kids at home and the dad don't want to help. It doesn't matter that she has a, a, a degree from Harvard. All that don't matter. What matters is she is capable of doing whatever she wants to do. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about this woman who's a capable woman just because she says she can do it. And we're going we're gonna to support her. Yes, ma'am. So we're going to change the narrative from strong to capable. Okay. Yes. 
Yes, yes ma'am. And, and the follow up with that, I want to ask, why do we as black women feel like we have to take on this narrative? Why, why do we feel like we have to take on this mantle? Is it because of how society tries to beat us down? Do we feel like that's our comeback? That's our clap back or something? Well, we're in a patriarchal society. It's always been, you know, uh, man led, man ideas, man, what they feel is, you know, a woman's role. And, you know, feminists fight against this. Um, and some of us, we don't fight against it. We we, we roll with the punches. And, um, and some of us don't agree with everything that the feminist movement did. Um, but at the same time, like we got to get on, we got to get on, we got to get on somebody vote. <laughs> like, you know, if we want to progress, you know, we're, we're progressing, but so slowly because there's still that, that foundation of our worth is still holding firm and solid. And so we got to break it, you know, some people, you know, Black Lives Matter, you know, we've been we've been fighting, uh, you know, with things with with pro police brutality and things like that. People tearing down statues. We got to break this foundation up. Um, and, you know, Kamala is a good example of, hey, we're getting somewhere, you know, but we got to keep going. We got to keep pushing. We have to we have to uh, <clears throat> we have to take stands and say enough is enough. And we have to talk to each other. Listen, I get on social media. People be mad at me. I've been in your inbox. Sis. Well, <laughs> put some clothes on. You know, I respect you. I know what you're doing. But here's the problem. When you're doing that. The next person that see me think it's okay. Like you know, I, when you're prom you're promoting, you know, yourself in a provocative manner, not promoting that you're losing weight and promoting that, you know, what I'm saying you 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 know you getting your beach body together. You know, I understand, I respect all that. But when you you promoting sexual, you know, sexuality and promote certain things that devalue us, like I'm I'm coming. I'm gonna say something. You know, we gonna have us a, a message messenger discussion. <laughs> And I think that so <laughs> we we need to take on responsibility. And that leads into the next question, which I need you to put all your therapist get all your therapist tools on right now. Okay. Right. Right. So <laughs> let's see what I can do. The question is if there are toxic and contributing factors to mm -hmm. our breakdown in mental health, how do we detach? So you've alluded to some of the some of it. So now it's like, okay, we're in a session. I'm your client. I got all this toxic, all this stuff happening. Okay, Kabila, what to do? <laughs> okay. So first of all, we need to figure out, okay, where, where is like, what is leading to you, you know, to this toxic mentality? Like we got to get to the root of the problem. Like we could a lot of times deal with the symptoms, but we got to deal with the root. Where did this come from? Like, how do we get here? Like what's going on? Um, and then once we can lay all that out on the table, then we can deal with it. All right. So, um, you know, my toxic thoughts are coming from the fact that I was always told I wasn't going to make it when I was a kid. I wasn't good enough. You know, I was ugly. And everybody talked about my forehead and, and my big nose, you know, and stuff like that. And so now I'm self-conscious and I don't want to, you know, say I don't like looking at myself in the mirror and I'm not good enough. So I find myself in these relationships with people um, just to find some sense of, of comfort, just to find some sense of, of love. And I don't get the love, but I get a a little attention so I'm count that as love and I'm a stay even though it's not good for me but I'm unhappy uh -huh. okay what do I do okay well let's go back to this childhood okay what well, let's let's talk about why that affects you so much let's deal with that okay let's lay it out let's tell me all the emotions you felt with that I was hurt I was scared I was angry I felt defeated I felt like I wasn't enough okay so now let's challenge those negative thoughts. So now we got to challenge those thoughts. We got to reframe my thinking. Let's just, let's flip all those thoughts into something positive. Let's affirm ourselves. Okay, I am pretty. Okay, I am good enough. Okay, so these are the things you're going to do every day till you believe it. You're going to say this. You're going to put it up on your wall. This is, you need to put it by your mirror. You need to look in the mirror and you need to say these words because you don't like looking in the mirror. Now we're going to face ourselves. So these are little things that we can do to kind of get us to a place where we're confident and we feel like, okay, I'm enough. Now that I feel like I'm enough, now we're going to break these cycles. We're going to break this unhealthy stuff that you've been doing for so long. We're going to break these unhealthy relationships. We're going to break these cycles because you just keep going in cycles because you keep wanting to abuse yourself because others did it to you. You felt like you wasn't good enough. So now we got to deal with that. And so once we deal with that, now we got a healthier you. Now we got to hear through you what we're doing. Let's set some goals for the future. Wow. So that's that's how we would do that. 
That is amazing. And in some of your sessions, have you ever had people, your clients, um, physically look in a mirror while they're with you and just like, I need you to face yourself, like right here, right Absolutely. now? Absolutely. Yes, I tell them, get your phone up, you know, uh, where your mirror at, get your camera app out. So let's look at ourselves. Let's talk this through. Why don't you tell me what you see? Do activities. Um, <clears throat> let's, I, I'm going to put put the camera up or bring a mirror, especially in groups with young girls. Uh, that's a good one as well. Um, I've done that with them. Draw, draw what you see. Write mm -hmm. on, draw a mirror. And then I want you to write what you see when you look in the mirror. And I get all type of things. Mm -hmm. Ugly, you know unhappy um like not enough dumb uh not smart stupid you know things like that um and and so we have to deal with that okay so that's what you see all right so why do you feel that way like why do you think that you're ugly why do you think you're not beautiful and a lot of times it's it's several things that come with that sometimes it's i didn't get enough attention Mm -hmm. My, you know, my parents, they work so much or my other siblings got more attention than me or somebody touched them when they were younger, you know, just different things like that. Um, and so I have them look at that mirror. And when you're younger, of course, we got to trade that little light there than you would when somebody older. And it's like shaking them, sis, OK, enough is enough. Like we're going to break the mirror, not we're not going to physically break this mirror, but we're going to break this mirror that you see yourself ugly in, like we're tearing this up. This this mirror doesn't exist. Okay. That's all in your head. So this mirror don't exist. We gotta we gotta get this negative thinking out of there. This is not true. So you telling yourself it's not true. And now we gotta we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna form some things that are true. We're gonna get healthy. So wow. yeah, so I have had that in sessions and I've worked with people to kind of help them form more positive I statements about themselves and, and see themselves in a different light and and create their own narrative and, and to tear up the ones that other people have for them. Wow. And can you share, of course, without personal information, but share any success stories of, you know, women that you uh, counseled that you've seen them at their lowest and now they are thriving. Oh yes, oh yes, <laughs> several stories. Um, I have one um, <clears throat> story in particular where um, I had a lady that I was counseling with, and she was going through a very, very tough time. Um, in in her in her life, she had um, been abused by her father, and um, she had <clears throat> had um, been in an abusive relationship with a spouse, and they um, kind of put the you know sexually abused her as well, physically abused her, locked her in closets, like just all of these traumatic things that she she went through. She was angry, she was closed off, she didn't want to open up to me, um, and so I didn't come in straight off. Let's talk about what happened to you when you was a child. I came in and and pointing out things that you see in a person, like you seem closed off. Like, oh, you seem angry today, you know, and just being uh, myself kind of start to let those walls down, those layers. She makes statements. I'll acknowledge it. I support her. Let her talk about the things that she went through. OK, so let's 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 deal with that. And so we work together for a little over a year and like she's getting married, <laughs> like she's in, in relationships and she's not ashamed of her body and. Um, she's just like, she was able to have a conversation with her father about her past and rebuilt that relationship, get, got her divorced from, you know, her abusive husband wouldn't give it to her. Like she just got, she just got to a good place where it was more about getting herself firm and her thinking more positive and, and finding her inner capabilities so that she can walk away from all of those things that was holding her back. And so she's very happy. She's free. And, and I love it. That's absolutely amazing. So as we get close to closing, what are some final thoughts, tips that you would like to leave with people um, <laughs> when it comes to this strong black woman? Narr I'm going to call it a narrative. The yes. strong black woman and to hopefully prevent her from breaking. <laughs> yes. Um, 
strength is 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 an internal thing and you have to define it um take that power out of other people's hands um what other people define as strength learn who you are um you don't have to take on what your mom went what your mom says the strength is you don't have to take on what your grandma says and anybody else in your life you define it for you and you walk in that um you be confident in who you are accept who you are um and just if you haven't done it in 2021 take your power back take it out of hands of people you can't meet people's needs um you'll never be able to satisfy anybody work on satisfying yourself and find your peace and your happiness and just live amen amen i can't thank you enough for joining me and having this conversation um ladies um change the narrative think about what you're capable of not just don't let anyone tell you, oh, you're a strong person as a compliment. Like they have no clue of the internal battles you're dealing with. Like if I told people a lot of things that I deal with emotionally and physically, they were like, wow, okay. Yes. Um, one of my sisters and I have gotten really close over the past year and a half. And awesome. she said it took her coming to see me in person wow. to really get, you know, I could tell her all day what I'm dealing with. But when she saw me in person, she was like, baby sis, I have such a newfound respect and love and admiration for you um, for all the things that you have accomplished in your limited capacity. Well, what others may see as limited capacity, you know? Um, you know, I don't get out physically much just due to some limitations, but I got a mouth, I got a camera, I got a, you know, computer. I get it done. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, take on your on like you just like you know you you you're making a good, great points here like you don't just say no to stuff take on what you can you're like what you're capable of doing don't try to meet the, the strong this strong narrative that everybody else has like like i say you can, aren't going to please people and you don't have to try to go through the worst of stuff just to say you're strong no you don't have to <laughs> like you, you 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 just do what you are able say no to everything else and do what you want to do Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. Now, if people want to get in touch with you for their own counseling session. Let me go ahead and drop your information in the uh, on the screen. So, how can I reach you? Oh yes, um, you can email me at Ashley A S H L E Y M Wilson A. 29, I was about to say my other one, sorry. Ashley M. Wilson, 29 at gmail.com. Um, let me say that again. Ashley, S-H-L-E-Y, M. Wilson, 29 at gmail.com. Or you can um, reach me by text or um, call me at 870-680-2510. Right, so let me, you know, I'm a little slow sometimes. So 870 870- Yes, 680. Okay. 2510. All right, you all. So, look, reach out. Don't be afraid. Uh, take the first step. Take back control Absolutely. of your life. <laughs> yes. Um, rewrite <laughs> There's nothing the, wrong with it. Rewrite the narrative, you know, and don't let others try to tell you what you're capable of. You tell them. Can you show them? Absolutely. Look, Absolutely. the crown on, straighten it. <laughs> Gone, girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> so thank you so much, Ashley, for joining thank me. You. Um, yes. and, um, little shameless plug. You need some paparazzi jewelry. You want to look fabulous. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I love to come back anytime. Yes, ma'am. Uh, this will not be the last time I have some other topics, you know, and in, in, um, outline that I would love to get discussed. So, yeah, we're going to definitely come back again for some more girl chat. Thank you yes. so much. And thank I wanna, you. <laughs> I want to thank each and every person for supporting the Q-Spot podcast in whatever capacity you have. Don't forget to be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions. And as always, pink sugar kisses, y'all. Have a good day. Thank you for watching the Q-Spot podcast video series. Don't forget to join the Q-Crew so you don't miss a beat. Follow, like, and share on all of my social media platforms, as well as the major podcast platforms. Lastly, be intentional with your words, your thoughts, and your actions.